a small group of hornets, like maybe a half a dozen, a dozen hornets can wipe out a hive in an hour and a half to two hours. So they become really effective at killing uh, the bees. At the end of their colony cycle, so this is like late summer, early fall, when they are ramping up production of, of the reproductives, of, of the new queens that will leave the hive and, or leave the nest and start new nests, they need a lot of protein sources. And so that's when they engage in this really interesting mass attack behavior on beehives. Um, what will happen is a hornet will, will mark a hive and then her sister workers will come and then as a group they will just catch bees, bite their heads off, throw them onto the ground, and they'll do that until the bees are no longer able to mount any kind of defense. Uh, once that happens, they enter what's called the occupation phase, and they walk around in the hive at will and take larvae and pupae of the bees, fly it back to their own nest, and feed it to their young. It's kind of gruesome sounding. In terms of trapping, we're using the, uh, the technology that has been developed that, that is most widely used in Japan, which is simply orange juice and wine blended together and hung in a plastic bottle. The hornets will you know, come and investigate it. They get stuck in the bottle and drown. It's not dissimilar to the hornet traps you might see hanging at a park uh, or something like that. We can't use those because the, the holes are too small. These hornets are too big. The other approach we have available are using handheld uh, thermal imaging cameras to find nests in the ground. When they create their nest, they will maintain the inter internal temperature at like 86 degrees Fahrenheit, so pretty warm, certainly warmer than our soil usually is. Um, and so we're hoping to be able to use these early in the morning to, uh, to locate nests once we have an idea of where it might be. They've been intercepted at ports before. We actually got a couple off of a helicopter at Fort Lewis in um, a military base here in Washington uh, that, had, that had come back from overseas. Those were dead. So, so we do intercept them at ports occasionally. But yeah, these, to my knowledge, are the first ones that have ever been hanging out in somebody's yard. So if you get stung by one, it hurts a lot. Uh, the Conrad, in fact, the beekeeper that destroyed the nest in Nanaimo, described it as having red-hot thumbtacks shoved into his uh, skin. If you get stung, there's always the risk of anaphylactic shock. You know, a subset of people are truly allergic to, to wasp stings or hornet stings, and so uh, a single sting for somebody like that could be very life-threatening because of their allergic response. Um, otherwise, it seems like the most risky... Um, the most risky human hornet encounters are when somebody stumbles upon a nest or when they're protecting a or, or around a beehive that the hornets have decided to attack. Uh, when they do that, they will defend it the same as they would their own nest. And that's where you're at risk just from getting multiple stings from very large venomous insects. And the venom has necrotic it, um, characteristics. It can make your tissue dissolve a little bit. It can cause heart, heart and, and kidney problems. Don't call it a murder hornet. Remember that, that they're just Asian giant hornets. They're out doing their thing. They don't really care about human beings. Um, it's only in the very unlucky instance that you encountered one that, that they might sting you. If you think you've seen one, um, call your State Department of Agriculture, ideally with a photograph, uh, because that will be really helpful for us. Even if it's a negative, uh, like even if you're not sure, that's okay. Because the first time we find a positive, we can really ramp up our activity at that location and, and have a better chance of eradicating them.